So I've had the SR GT125 since August now. It is now uh, beginning of November. So I thought I'd just go over with you the various changes, add-ons and things that I've done just in case it inspires any of anybody out there who's about to get a bike to do some changes to theirs too. Nothing too strenuous, nothing too technical, but some things that I think just improve the look of it and the practicality of it a little bit. So here we go. This is the complete list of what I've done to the SR GT125. First up, 11mm wheel rim tape in a nice silver colour, matches the plastic and I think it adds a little bit of individuality to the bike, obviously not an essential, but you know, I quite like it. So there we go, 11mm wheel rim tape. Mirror extenders, if you actually want to see what's going on behind you, I highly recommend these. The stock mirrors, where they're positioned on the bike, are not great. I did try uh, long stem mirrors, but the vibration on them was too much. Although I have to say the view was great, but the vibration wasn't good. These are brilliant, no vibration, and give you that extra inch, inch and a half of view that makes all the difference. Mirror extenders, I would recommend those from a safety point of view. Another optional extra, 180 degree rear view holographic mirror. Useful. I find it particularly useful for cyclists. Um, the roads are full of them these days and they can sneak up along either side of you before you even know they're there. Very useful for catching them out and just keeping an eye on what they're up to. Holographic 180 degree mirror. Costs less than a tenner on eBay. Again, a handy little safety thing worth getting. The design of the handlebars doesn't really allow for much to be attached to them. So I got a bar, a crossbar from AliExpress, again, probably less than 10 pounds, and fitted it on between the handlebars. Now the standard crossbar lengths, as I've mentioned in a video I did on this, are too long. So you have to cut it by 15 mil each side, but again, it's easy to do and it fits perfectly. Only thing I've added so far is a mobile phone mount. Now I don't tend to mount my mobile phone on the bike very often because more normally I'm just doing short journeys. But when we get to the better weather again and we're doing some longer journeys, it might be handy for a, a GPS or something like that. This is just an old phone mount I had that I used to use occasionally on the Honda Zuma. But it's, it's, in, it's unobtrusive. I quite like the design of it. You can obviously loosen it and tighten it up so the phone has gripped very well. Um, what's the make there? If you can make that out, I can barely can. Um, I don't think this was expensive. It wouldn't be if I was buying it, but it's a good little phone mount uh, and the bar of course means you've still got room to add anything else you want to as well. Um, so all in all, a, a mod that I quite like. Now the foot plates are one I'm quite pleased with because obviously these are, this is the thing I did entirely myself. These weren't bought or anything. Um, anyone who's watched the foot plate video I did will notice that I removed the black um, screw caps that I did have on here and I've um, countersunk the plate slightly and put in uh, stainless steel hex bolts um, which I think looks much better than the original setup I had. So I'm quite pleased with the foot plates. They were a wee job um, I didn't know it was going to work or not but actually I think it's come out quite well. So that's an optional one if you fancy something a little bit more challenging. I've done a full video on how I made them so you're welcome to watch that. Aluminium foot plates. Now this is one of the first things I did if I remember rightly and this was just a little partition so that this top section under seat becomes much more useful because if you don't have this basically anything you put in here just slides down into the bottom so this is kind of dead space so what I did was just make a little partition here it's nothing fancy but it means you can actually keep stuff up here separate it use it and it's actually a useful area now as opposed to dead space so under seat partition so top box and rack. I would say top box and rack are essential to really make the bike useful, particularly if you're going to do shopping trips, anything like that, or even just for carrying your day-to-day -day stuff. The underseat storage space isn't massive, and uh, I don't like wearing backpacks. I think they're dangerous if you come off, so I'm delighted I've got a top box and a rack. The rack is a shad rack. Um, now, any of you who watched my install video on this will know that originally I had a cheapy uh, 1999 eBay top box on this, which was about 25, 26 litres. Uh, a very generous friend of mine uh, who is on eBay, uh, who is on YouTube rather, a Scooty Man. Um, have a look at his videos. He does some amazing stuff with the Honda Visions. Um, knows, his, knows every inch of scooters, knows his business. A very generous man. Had a spare GV top box 
that he didn't need. This is a 29 litre and he very kindly gave it to me. Um, so I now have a much better top box. It's more substantial, obviously, than the, the 20 pound eBay one. The lock is better, everything is better. So I'm delighted with that. Um, it's also less um, less oval shaped than the, than the, the cheap one. It's, it's a slightly more square look to it, which is actually more practical. So um, excellent, really good. And again, thanks hugely to Simon for um, providing me with that. That's very much appreciated. Uh, I, the ra the um, mounting plate that comes with this doesn't fit automatically onto a shad, um, but the holes that I had to drill in the shad for the so-called universal plate on the eBay one, which wasn't universal at all, um, I was able to get those to fit with this as well, so that was fine. So it went on no problem. So as you can see, this is Scotland after all. Winter is coming, uh, a lot of rain. We'll have them, um, snow, we'll have all kinds of things coming at some point, no doubt. Um, the bike does get dirty. So what I did get were shock absorber covers like these, which just are gonna keep the shocks in decent condition through the winter. Uh, the main thing, of course, we have here is road salt when the roads get icy. Now, I don't tend to ride the bike when the roads are icy. I think it's just asking for trouble. But, you know, long after the ice is gone, the road salt, road salt will remain and it throws up under, underneath and can, you know, rot your metal work. So, I found those online, they fit nicely, quite substantial, so shock absorber covers just to keep the shocks looking nice and shiny uh, until the summer weather comes again. So hopefully you've all watched my video of the, the tail tidy I did, removing the stock uh, number plate holder which was away down here somewhere on the it, it comes with the bike it was i thought it was too low and also because i ride on a provisional with an l plate the l plate was almost banging off the ground so um, i decided to do the tail tidy got the bracket on ebay fitted it there's a video again describes the whole thing and so far i'm delighted with it it's worked really well one tip for those of us in this country who are on um cbt's and provisional licenses aluminium l plate i got this on ebay for a fiver it saves replacing plastic ones every few weeks when they break, snap and fall off. Aluminium mill plate, a little tip there, well recommended. So that's it, that's all the updates, mods, call them what you like, that I've done to the bike in the two to three months that I've had it. One other thing I did get was an Apple AirTag, which actually works really well as a, a sort of locator. Um, I'm quite happy with that. Obviously, I'm not going to do a video on where that is and how it's fitted because that probably wouldn't be a great idea. But there is an Apple AirTag on this bike and it lets me know whenever the bike is moved. Although, thankfully, at the moment, it's only me that's moving it. But it's, it's a useful thing to have. And of course, it's a very cheap way of um, just keeping an eye on where your bike is. So that's it, guys. That's all the mods. That's where we are at the moment. Thanks as always for watching and uh, I shall be back when I've got something else to do. All the best now. Cheers.